Hello. Hi. Good evening, afternoon, morning, wherever you are, you're watching. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. It's been a long time since I've been on here and I recognize that very much. And I would love to give you some updates as to where I've been, what, what I've been doing, and also to share a lot of thoughts or tips, a few, not too many, because I don't want to overwhelm you, uh, about the home buying process, right? So let's start with updates. Um, but we do, before we do that, let me say thank you for watching and let me say thank you for coming back. This is a channel where I talk about personal finance. I talk about life happenings and anything that I feel I have gone through so I can offer my insight, but also um, from a place of, of faith, right? So you hear me talk about God. I'm Christian. I'm not Catholic. I'm Protestant. So I grew up Pentecostal. So you hear me talk a lot about that in my videos and take what you need and leave what you don't. <laughs> um, that's what I'll say to that. So let's see. Um, on this channel, you also, I, when you go to my videos, sometimes I do videos for studying, so you can check those out. I do love listening to um, High Life. I'm originally from Ghana, and in the 90s, 80s, probably maybe in the 70s, um, High Life was, you know, a genre that was super, super, super strong these days, not as much, and I listen to those, so I'll do compilations. I have one from Gasper Jamna, who's really good. Um, and Ohena Bakisi, who's, I, I really love their song. So feel free to check out some of my videos and listen to some old school Ghanaian high life, clean, um, but loving and not profane or anything gross to that extent where you can enjoy singing it to your partner or yourself, right? Or whoever. So anyway, check that out. Um, and so that's what I do um, on my channel. Another exciting thing I like to share is I'm re I recently got into executive function coaching, so I'm training to do that in the next couple of weeks. So if you don't know what it is, Google it, and you understand what executive function coaching is, or a coach who does executive function is. Um, and let's get into um, you know some of the things that I've why I've been away. Right, I think that's the first thing. I've been away because I needed a little isolation. I needed to let the dust settle for me and certain things that were going on um, career-wise and personal things. And also um, if isolation is good for hearing the noise, right? You go into isolation because you want silence, but the silence also uh, amplifies the noise, I think. And through the noise, you're able to tell which one is the noise and which one really is the rhythm you're looking for or the words you're looking for, the voice you're looking for. But you can't do that in the noise. You have to kind of be isolated in the silence and in your own silence, when things start to amplify, you can say, okay, this is, this is not it, this is it. So that's what I have been going through. It has been great. I've referred to a lot of mentors. I've been in touch with friends. Um, I have prayed. I have done everything that I could do to make sure that I'm getting through that. It's a growth spurt also, right? So I believe that my bamboo season is coming and is, if it's either going to come by the end of the year, it's going to come 2024, which is very soon. But I think sometimes when you need that isolation or things are just not going correctly, um, it just means that something better is coming and you just need to settle need to be still and you need to isolate so you can put, protect yourself as well because isolation does protect you um, as well as you're growing into certain spaces that life has for you. Okay, before this turns into a preaching, <laughs> uh, let's talk about um, buying a home. So in my first video, I gave a testimony about how I bought my home, what, what, what led to it, and the testimony of how things and people and how God just brought me into the place that I am. My walls are still bare. <laughs> I have been in my home for about five months, going on six, and it, it feels great. It's, you know, and I don't want to rush to do anything to it. So if you have any ideas on how to make my background exciting, please let me know. I am still in that mode of making sure that I'm not overspending or doing too much um, too soon because I did just shell a lot of money to buy a home and it's not about oh your home is ex super expensive it's just buying a home is a lot of um, 
as a, as a financial step that if you're not ready for, you will feel as though you have dug a hole and you've just buried yourself. But if you do it correctly, it will be um, um, a form of investment. Real estate is a form of investment. It is a form of building wealth. In fact, most people will tell you that saving money um, is not wealth building. And, um, and so real estate is the number one way of building wealth and investing. And, and real estate is a form of investing. So the two go hand in hand. So I'm very glad and thankful that I was able to buy my home. And I would love to share with you some tips on what I did to get myself ready to buy the home. Okay. Okay, so I have my notes here. So if you see me looking down, it's just me making sure that I can tell you exactly what I need to tell you. I'm going to try and keep this within 12 minutes, but we will see. Let's just stay 20 minutes. <laughs> um, okay, so buying my first home. And I say first because I am believing that I will own more property, right? So I'm putting it out there. I'm going to work towards it, and I'm going to make sure that I'm able to to be ready, given the step that I have for you today, I will use the same steps, maybe amplify it a little bit in certain areas, maybe dim down certain things here and there, but tweak it to fit what my financial situation will be when I'm ready to buy. But now I'm preparing towards it. So this is what I did to buy my first home. I'm going to put it into two categories. And when if you do personal finance coaching with me, um, well, let me talk a little bit about that. So I do personal finance coaching. I love to coach Africans, immigrants, first in things, right? And you can go on my, my website and read testimonials. I, I put my all into it. I believe what I'm doing. I feel very called to do this. It's a passion of mine. Um, and so when I do have my clients, we talk beyond just personal finance because a lot of what we're going through, especially as Africans, is very cultural and is impeding on us being financially independent, financially whole, financially free, because of the cultural nuances that come with um, um, being, you know, that the cultural nuances that are attached to personal finance or wealth or money in general, right? And if you're a female African or black person, it really is doubled almost, right? And for men, not to say that you men don't have those um responsibilities or forced responsibility sometimes is to say that both genders both sexes do go through that especially within the african community the expectations sometimes are unreal and unkind and so i work with you to make sure that you have your mask on right and before you can put someone else's mask on and that's something that it takes a little bit so check out my page reach out i'd love to coach you it is not free of charge so if you're looking for that then feel free to come to my my free workshops but um and then that investment in yourself does cost so the same way you invest in your iphone or whatever phone you have or vacation investing in your personal finance and getting coaching is equally as important if not more peace okay so let's get into some of the things i did so the first category or the first title i will call this is preparing the vessel. Now, when I do my personal finance coaching, I have a book. Let me see if I can pull that here. Uh, I wrote, I wrote a book, right? It is 200 pages worth. I love it. And it tells you about personal finance. It gives you a lot of, um, a lot of things to do. It has templates. It walks you through savings. It walks you, it gives you um, debt repayment templates. It gives you, um, it really is like a little journal also because I go through some of the emotions that come with it and how to, how to go through that. And then you have um, budgeting and saving. So I have poured a lot into that, into this book. It is on my Etsy. I'll link it below. It goes for $40, which comes with the book. It comes with savings envelopes, a pencil, and an eraser for now, and a bookmark. And in the uh, next Quarter, I will be revamping it even more so but this is amazing and you know the templates of budgeting and everything so get yours now um, and it's good for all ages it's colorful because I don't like um, budgeting to be boring the black and white actually makes me bored so I do my very you know in different colors and so it's super super colorful and it's yours right so 
look it up and get your copy get it for a friend and i'll be more than happy to also walk you through how to use a book for about 10 to 15 minutes um when you buy it just let me know now preparing the vessel preparing the vessel is really you just putting your house in order it is a mental check it is a financial check and also it is a credit score check <laughs> and so what do i mean by preparing the vessel let's talk about it finance check is part of preparing the vessel the vessel is you the vessel is your life your vessel is um um it's, a, it's really you right you're preparing yourself for this journey of buying a home i would never advise you to just go buy a home just because everybody's doing it you need to do these steps right and i think most people will tell you think about it so you, this could be a think about it moment but i call it preparing the vessel and when the kind of preparing the vessel is personal finance check or financial check right as if and one few of the things or four of the things i did and I recommend that you do before you even go talk to any realtor is to check how your finances are. The first thing is your debt management. What is the ratio between your income and your debt management? Are you able to pay off all your credit card debts? Do you have credit card debts? If you do have credit card debts, is it like $2,000? Is it 10,000? Is it 15? Is it $20,000? Right? Can you pay those off before you even get into um buying a home because they will check that if you have student loan debt most of the time they don't really care too much about that they do care about outstanding debt like personal loans credit cards uh, maybe if this is your second property they want to see the first property um, um what kind of debts is there any other debt that uh, car loan debts you know have you been paying it on time your bills on time, insurance, are you behind on your car insurance or even your car notes? Those kind of debts you have to look into and make sure you're in good standing. Good standing means you've paid it off or you have very little balance on it that you can, you're doing good on the monthly payments um, or you do pay off all your statement balance um, in full every month, right? You also don't want huge debts. Like I said, anything about 5,000 or even 2,000, I think you just need to clear out so you can get better rates and you can get you know better loans and also you uh, and assuming you over i think you get better service because you are on top of the game so check that right once as part of your financial check which falls under preparing the vessel another thing is your savings how much do you have saved for your house did you save towards it you didn't if you didn't save towards it what sorry, my leg is falling asleep what does that mean it means that this is going to be difficult I do not believe and I do not think everyone buys a home with zero dollars. This is what I mean by that. Sure, you didn't have to pay a dime towards purchasing the home. But when it comes to furnishing the home, you're going to pay some money. When it comes to moving into the home, you're going to pay some money. When it comes to the inspection, you may pay some money. Probably you will. If it's, part of, it's all wrapped up in the loan, good for you. But typically it's not when it comes to you know buying things you know to fix things up or to even furnish your home all these little things take money and this is money that does not come under the lender's loan that gives they give to you the seller is not going to cover all of that you have to cover cover that so yes you can buy a home with zero down payment but you will need money to do all the other things i just talked about so have money how much would you say I will say if you have 5,000 or even six or seven, it gives you that flexibility. People will say, well, I don't need all of that. You don't, but the cushion is going to help you so much. If you have the cushion, it's going to be super helpful. It's going to give you a peace of mind. There's no reason why you should be going through something stressful. It can be stressful, but hectic um, as buying a home and making sure everything is in order. And then you find yourself um, <laughs> uh you know you know asking for you know change or money because you didn't budget it well so i would say have enough money if you don't have enough money in your savings account start saving towards it and which brings me to budgeting that's the only way you can do these things debt management savings um tracking your expenses these are all part of pre preparing the vessel make sure you're in great standing make sure you have enough um, for you and if your family is with you then that's fine Make sure you have enough for all of that movement around and the little things that come up that you don't expect 
um, and when you move into your house, the little things that you might end up having to pay for. Also, making sure you have money for your first two, two or three a month um, utility bills because they're usually wonky. They're not usually um, the ideal uh, amount to be paying every month because of when you buy the home, it's prorated. Sometimes you start in the middle of the month, so you you don't quite see that. Oh, okay, um, actually, my bill is a hundred dollars um in actuality but i got fifty dollars so then you know i'm good you just need that cushion for for all of that and it will take about three to four months for your bills to start settling and saying okay my my utility bills are this much i actually use this much okay maybe i'm using too much like water bill comes every three months so when you get the first bill you think oh this is cheap wait for three months <laughs> you know in some areas i would say so that, that's what I mean by pre preparing the vessel here. Um, let's talk about um, your credit score. The credit score is part of preparing the vessel. Make sure you have at least 650 and above. These days, um, I think if you have 700, that's good. If you can't hit it, that's okay. But if you have 60, 660 credit score and above, I think you're really, really good, especially if you have that score and you don't owe too much on your credit card or you, you you know you don't have any loans or debt you're a great candidate another thing is your income that you should be checking how how much are you earning if you're trying to buy a 400 500 thousand dollar house but you're racking you're bringing in your income is is fifty thousand dollars is ma'am sir are you able to afford it the answer is no because the interest rates are high how can you afford all of that and also put food on your table if you have kids or anything like that? How are you able to feed them at the same time? They will not give you a loan. So it's called cut your coat according to your size. <laughs> cut your coat according to your size, right? Um, and just also one thing that I've come to realize, and I said this to a client and she was like, oh my God, I didn't think of, think of it this way, is just because you're bringing $50,000 a year, like your salary says, I make $50,000 a year, it doesn't mean you're bringing in $50,000. It means you're bringing in way less. Why? Because taxes. So it's great to say, hey, I make six figures. I make $100,000. I make $120,000, $150,000, right? All of that. Until, I think, until you make about $150,000 or $170,000 or maybe, then you can feel that you're bringing in $100,000, like net income. But until that that amount hits you, until you make that amount of money, you're not bringing in everything that you are, you know, your salary says. Even if you're making two hundred thousand dollars, you're not bringing home two hundred thousand dollars. You're not. Taxes alone is probably paying like a good twenty percent or ten percent of taxes. It's actually more. It's insane. So adjust adjust your thinking here and make sure that your income is able to support you when you buy a home. Because usually buying a home means it's you know your your um your expenses will go up right so that's one thing that you should definitely take into account um so that is preparing the vessel for mental check preparing the vessel another point is mental check mental check am I able sorry finance check anyway you get what I mean <laughs> so we talked about financial check and then we're talking about mental check are you able to own are you ready to own maybe not able we are able but are we ready to own um own first time owning own own another house own whatever are you ready to own are you ready to be a homeowner and to take care of someone you know there's a leak somewhere plumbers are mad expensive can you afford to do that do you have um a disposable income to do that do you have money that can go towards those things a mental check do you want to do you want that responsibility some people don't want that responsibility it's too much so mentally and emotionally check if you're ready for this big step and this big responsibility and if you're not that's okay it's, it's okay to just say okay not this year it's okay to say maybe not in the five years it's okay to say never right it really is okay so mentally check if you're ready to to do all of that right if you're ready to take that step um are you ready to also own a home and maintain it? Like these are mentally the things that you should you should be thinking about. So those are, I believe, the preparing the vessel that I want to share. And the last one um, 
is the, the second category. So the first step is preparing the vessel. We just talked about financial check. We talked about mental check. The second category, which will be the last, and then I'll give some tips because I'm seeing that this thing is going to like 30 minutes. <laughs> um, taking flight. So we prepare the vessel. We're now ready to take flight. Taking flight doesn't mean I'm going to buy a home, but it just means you're moving towards, you know, about to fly. When you're about to take flight, you're starting to flap your wings. You're checking if everything is good. Are my feathers intact? Are they clean? Is anything broken? You know, that I, is going to stop me from, you know, soaring or flying. You get the idea. Taking flights. One of the things I will say is if you're comfortable with your financial check mentally, okay, I'm good. Then talk to people who have owned homes and properties before. Um, talk to anyone who talked to you, but also be specific. As a black person, I would highly recommend you talking to black home owners, first time home owners, second, people who have many um, properties. If you're an immigrant, same thing, the immigrant community, any community that you belong to that intersects with who you are, um, talk to people from that community and make sure that you're getting their insights. Talk to at least three people from different perspectives and from the different communities that you belong that intersect with who you are. So if you're Christian, talk to a Christian first um, homeowner. If you're black, talk to someone who's own who's black who owns a home. If you're a single black woman, talk to someone who's a single black woman who owns her own home. If you are, shoot, I don't even know, you are in your 30s, you're in your 20s, you are Ghanaian, you are Nigerian, you are Af you, wherever you are. Find people in those communities and talk to them and get insight. Now, I will tell you, some Africans don't like to share. And I say Africans because I'm more familiar with that. I don't know if this is the same for South Americans or people, you know, Latinos or anything like that. But some people don't like to share because in their mind, one, knowledge is power. Two, if they share, you're going to use it against them or you're going to steal their glory or you're going to get you're going to be better than them it's this mentality that is very very sad but talk to people who would um, be open up and talk to you as well also talk to people who are outside your race people are, who don't check any of the boxes that you 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 intersect with right and talk to realtors i would say talk to at least three realtors talk to at least three lenders don't let them run your credit right and if your realtor is pushing you to run your credit ditch them Right now, you're taking flight doesn't mean you're like you're there. You're gathering your information. You're about to take flight. You're just like, you know, in the process of getting ready. Um, and in the next two or three months, if you're if you're taking flight, I should say that means within six months you're pre pretty ready to buy. But don't let them run your credit until you are ready. There are a lot of realtors and lenders who talk to you because they know that if they do it right, they have your business. And they won't push you to run your credit. They won't push you to um, do any sign anything. Do not sign in for the love of God. Do not sign anything. The only thing you should be signing is when you're closing on your home and you have like papers to stick to sign. That's the only thing you should be signing, right? Don't sign anything because the minute you sign something with a realtor, it means that if you change that realtor, sometimes not always, but most of the time, if you change the realtor, whatever commission they get, whatever commission is um, on the home, your new realtor is not going to get it. Your old realtor that you didn't like is the one going to get it. Why? Because you already signed papers. So do not sign anything uh, with the lender or with um, with a realtor. There are a lot of realtors who talk to you. Oh my God, there are a lot of realtors who just give you information, who show you some homes also. And, and they wouldn't fuss about it because they understand and because they want the business. So that's what I did. I talked to a few realtors. And I settled on one and I talked to a few lenders and I settled on one. And so do that due diligence. Don't let anyone push you. Don't let anyone rush you. Do not let anyone guilt you either. Do not let anyone make you feel like you owe them anything. You don't owe anyone any, anything, but do your due diligence respectfully and let them know that you are shopping around and you're ready. Um, you're just about ready, but you have a lot of questions. I love my realtor. I'll put their information below because they educated me so much. They took the time to answer my questions 500 times in the same way or in different ways. And because I was so educated, that's why I'm able to tell you these things, right? I felt very comfortable. 
if your weird soul is not doing that for you and they're making you feel bad or they're just cutting you off or so you're asking questions, making you feel dumb, ditch them, honestly. Because home buying is super expensive. There's no way you should be feeling bad or sad or unsure or you know not having all the information because your realtor is not walking you through that. It's, it's, it's too hectic for a process for you to have a realtor who's not going to do what is right, do right by you. My realtor didn't do that. It's two of them, they're brothers. Louis and Mario, and they did not do that with me. And if even if they tried, I would have gone like, "Thank you, goodbye." Like I, I've worked with them long enough for them to know that I don't play that nonsense. So I recommend them because they definitely took their time and they encouraged me in certain things. They gave me nudges when I needed a nudge, and they also knew to back off when I was going like, "No, right." And I, you know, when I needed to call them out, I called them out. And but it wasn't a call out like, "Oh, you're terrible." It's more like. We talked about this or why didn't we do this that kind of a thing right so it worked out perfectly and the next my next video i could talk more about it but also in the next purchase i would definitely be using them unless something happens and you're no longer the business or whatever but anyway so that's what i'll say um another thing you should do when you're taking flight is to make a list of the things that you do need to submit your taxes you know your last two years of your taxes do you have it somewhere can we find it? <laughs> you can't find it. Find it because the lenders are going to ask. The lender you end up um, going with is going to ask all these things. So make sure your taxes are there, right? So maybe even this falls under preparing the vessel, honestly. Um, so make sure you have the last two or three years of your taxes. Make sure it's well done. Make sure you don't have any questions on there, honey. You know, didn't do any questionable things, but make sure you have the copies there. Make sure you have the number to your employer because you're going to run a check and make sure, do you work at where you say you work? Are you bringing in the money you say you're bringing in? They're going to, they're not going to go so much into your details, but sometimes they'll go as far as getting to know your blood type. Now, when I say that, I'm not saying medically, but I'm just trying to say that they do dig through your, your history quite a bit, your financial history quite a bit. So you don't want to be found wanting you want to make sure that you have everything in place and in check. Um, so do research, read what they typically need for the lender or to get you through the process smoothly. And start gathering, right? You're taking flight. Start gathering that information for yourself. Put it in nice folders um, on Google Drive or wherever. Start cleaning things up and make sure that you have it. So when they say jump, you say how high, which is exactly the experience i had with my realtor i didn't give them any headaches my lender didn't have any headaches he would email me and say hey we need a deposit for the house how much he's like four thousand or something whatever it was I'm like great you know i could do more he's like no four thousand is good i had i didn't give them any problems and they didn't give me any problems and so it went smoothly for me because i had everything in order right so you don't want to be the person who is dilly dallying and just think that you can wake up one day and buy a house when you haven't done all the prep work and you haven't and your life is not in order right so this is a good reason why you should get a personal financial coach because then they can help you get those things straight now they can help you make sure that you have a budget they can help you make sure that you are living within your means if not below your means um, and to prepare you for the next year or two years down the line when you're ready to buy a house like these are the things that a coach a personal financial coach like myself will help you with so reach out and well the fun part will be taking flight is just looking at homes browsing on zillow or any other um, trusted um, sites for homes and, and if they have open houses and you can just walk in do it just go look at what you like do you want a townhouse would you like a true townhouse or would you like a single family home do you want a duplex like you know, where do you want it to be? What kind of loans would you like to get? You just, this is the part that gets super exciting once you have everything in order. So I encourage you to do that. If you have a realtor who's a friend, like, hey, I would like to just tag along on some of your showings, but please ask the client if they're okay with me tagging along. I just, or can you show me in your free time, right? Maybe it's like, okay, this is a personal showing. Some people might not like that. But honestly, if someone, if my realtor was like, yo, I have a friend who just wants to tag along, 
yes tag along i think i wouldn't mind that some people do mind so as a realtor i i'm not ready to buy but can you show me a few places and um <laughs> the reason why i'm giggling is i said i'm not ready to buy i'm not ready you know, i bought in less than three months <laughs> so so but i was ready right and that's one thing that my realtor helped me because he knew i was ready and so he waited me for me to get ready by giving me the right signals by helping me by guiding me towards that he didn't push me right so if you have a great realtor honestly everything will be super seamless so check them out below um i work with them i've recommended a few people to them and i think they are great mm. so let me wrap this up with some tips first tip is do not sign anything <laughs> the only thing you should be signing is at the closing when you're going to get your keys and you sign this thick um of paper the papers are just thick <laughs> you're just signing don't sign anything to any realtor in the beginning or anything to any lender in the beginning Make sure your lenders are not running your credit until you're ready for them to run your credit. They can do soft pulls to see and gauge how much, you know, loan you qualify for. And so shop around and make sure that you have the right um, lender. Talk to two or three realtors and also talk to three or two, two or three lenders and settle on one. Do not, for the love of God, just see a realtor and go with them. Even my recommendation, maybe the, maybe Louis and Mario are not, they are also immigrants, right? And, or first generation or, or second generation immigrant. So they understand what it meant to me as also a Ghanaian to, to own a home. And so I was comfortable going with them. Maybe, and they're from El Salvador and Guatemala. So maybe you don't want to work with people who have those intersectionalities for whatever reason. I'm not here to point fingers, right? Maybe you want to work with a white realtor. That's fine too. Maybe you want to work with a black realtor. That's fine too. But Find people who check different boxes for you, but don't be so in your box that you lose out on, you know, great service and you lose out on great lenders because you want X and Y, Z and X, you know, I went with a person, a minority, um, who, someone who falls in a minority category as a realtor and they're great. Honestly, I didn't even think it's just, it's just amazing. So be open-minded, but also be carefully open-minded. That's what I'm going to say to that. Um, another tip I'll say is ask a lot of questions so it makes sense to you. If it's not making sense to you, don't do it. If you know, and that's something that I did. I think my realtor at some point was like, remember I told you? Because <laughs> one, I was forgetting. And two, it's a lot of information. And three, I also wanted to make sure that I'm understanding what you're saying. So ask questions. Ask a lot. Talk to them on the phone. Not just meet with them face to face not just emailing you get to know who they are because some people are scammers and some people just want the money they don't care about you i say my i know my realtor cares about me to some extent right they even came for my um housewarming party all my realtor was here well two of them because they're brothers right my two of my realtors were here and then the lender was also here they and they stayed for hours they were dancing in my living room right eating food yes it was amazing. That's the relationship I want for you as well, right? Um, and because I, I consider myself to be someone who's nice, um, not nice to a point where you can run over me, but nice to a point where I'm inviting. And so our personalities fit, right? But it's okay if your realtor doesn't come to your housewoman party. It doesn't mean that you're supposed to experience that. I hope you do, but it just means that we got along so well and because our personalities fit, and we, are same, we have the same work ethic, it was great. And I wish that for you as well, right? So these are the tips that I have. This video is 35 minutes long. I'm so, oh, am I sorry? I'm not sorry. Um, but these are the tips that I have, and I hope they're helpful to you. I am glad that I've able, I'm able to come on here and share with you. Again, if you have any ideas on this background, please shoot me a text if you know me personally, or leave a comment below. Um, if you're looking for a personal finance coach, reach out to me. I quite enjoy working with people um, of or any any races, any intersectionality uh, races, any race. <laughs> um, I quite also enjoy working with uh, first anything young adults, um, 20s, 30s, even 40s, really, because we're all figuring things out. I love to work with you. Um, and yeah, that's what I'll say. And I'll end here. 
reach out and um, join me next time. I won't say next week or in two weeks because life is happening. Uh, but join me next time and I will give you some more tips on my home buying process. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Bye.